Good morning everyone. I'm the Reverend Anne and I'm delighted to welcome you to our morning service which is taking place in the chapel at St Giles. Today we're celebrating the week of Christian unity. Well I hope you're all well and that you're coping with this winter and the cold but maybe in this short time of worship we could all be warmed by the presence of the God of love. Blessed are you, Lord our God, King of the universe. From the rising of the sun until its setting, your name is proclaimed in all the world. Grace, mercy and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. For well, this is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. We've come together in the name of Christ to offer our praise and thanksgiving, to hear and receive God's holy word, to pray for the needs of the world and to seek the forgiveness of our sins, that by the powers of the Holy Spirit we may give ourselves to the service of God. We come to our time of penitence, remembering that sometimes we do or think or say something which can be hurtful. We ask God to forgive us. For not only do we hurt others, we hurt ourselves and we hurt the heart of God. But the grace of God has dawned upon the world through our Saviour Jesus Christ, who sacrificed himself for us to purify a people as his own. So let us confess our sins. May your loving mercy come to me, O Lord, and your salvation according to your word. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Your word is a lantern to my feet and a light to my path. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. O let your mercy come to me that I may live. For your law is my delight. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. We have a forgiving God who always brings us back to his loving arms when we come to him humbly. So may the Father of all mercies cleanse us from our sins and restore us in his image to the praise and glory of his name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Sovereign God, King of the nations. From the rising of the sun to its setting, your name is proclaimed in all the world. As the sun of righteousness dawns in our hearts, anoint our lips with the seal of your Spirit that we may witness to your gospel and sing your praise in all the earth. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. And this morning I'm going to say the morning canticle, the Jubilate. Oh, be joyful in the Lord, all ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness and come before his presence with a song. Be ye sure that the Lord, he is God. It is he that hath made us, and not we ourselves. We are his people, and the sheep of his pasture. For go your way into his gates with thanksgiving, and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him, and speak good of his name. For the Lord is gracious. His mercy is everlasting, and his truth endureth from generation to generation. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever, world without end. Amen. And the morning collect. O Lord, our Heavenly Father, Almighty and everlasting God, who has safely brought us to the beginning of this day. 
Defend us in the same with thy mighty power, and grant that this day we fall into no sin, neither run into any kind of danger, but that all our doings may be ordered by thy governance, to do always that is righteous in thy sight. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Today's reading is from 1 Corinthians chapter 1 beginning to read at verse 10. I appeal to you brothers and sisters by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ that all of you be in agreement and that there be no divisions among you but that you be united in the same mind and the same purpose. For it has been reported to be by Chloe's people that there are quarrels among you. My brothers and sisters, what I mean is that each of you says, I belong to Paul, or I belong to Apollos, or I belong to Cephas, or I belong to Christ. Has Christ been divided? I thank God that I baptised none of you except Crispus and Gaius, so that no one can say that you are baptised in my name. I did baptise also the house of Stephanus. Beyond that, I do not know whether I baptised anyone else. For Christ did not send me to baptise, but to proclaim the gospel, not with eloquent wisdom, so that the cross of Christ might not be emptied of its power. For the message about the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So this is the week of prayer for Christian unity. It's a very laudable cause. The idea of all Christians united in their faith, feeling very comfortable in their worship together, loving each other. I wish. History tells us that Christian unity has long been a cause which many have failed to agree upon. I was once given a book called Fox's Book of Martyrs. I can assure you that if there is a depressing read, Mr. Fox's book is a depressing read, and I would discourage you from reading it. He wrote in the 16th century and told of the many Protestant martyrs of the faith, and he told about it in somewhat unpleasant detail, just because they did not conform. Even in our own town of Newcastle, there were many religious disputes which had led to arson and violence. We're not really like that now, I hope not anyway. And although I condemn violence in any form, a religious violence is unforgivable. There is a longing for us to care about our own form of Christian faith, which should be beyond the petty squabbles of sect or creed, and yet it often isn't. We are Christians, all of us, whether we follow the Roman Catholic or the Church of England or the Congregational or the Baptist or Methodist or whatever way you feel that you are called to worship God. We are pilgrims on the way together. We find our way through our shared love of Jesus and not through whether we like this or that of the different trappings of religion. For me, quiet is the way to go. I love quiet worship. I love just to immerse myself into knowing the deep love Jesus has for me. I'm sure that the service, the unity service on tonight at the Congregational Church will be both moving and very spiritual. And we will all be singing from the same hymn sheet even though I have no doubt at all, it will be the usual, I don't know this one, or 
we always sing it to a different tune. You know, unity is very difficult to achieve. If it was easy, there wouldn't be quite so many denominations. There wouldn't even be so many Church of England churches. If we were all united, we would walk into any Christian church. We'd feel at home in the worship because before us, we would see God. We'd all be wrapped up in the love of God. But we don't. Sometimes we're not comfortable in worship that seems alien to us. Sometimes in services within our own churches. The Christian faith is a living thing. Our churches may look sometimes like museums, but our faith and the way we express our faith is alive and breathing. We should be changing and moving forward in our worship in the way we meet with our God. In this week of Christian unity, we are united in our love of Jesus. Nothing can change that. The whole of the Christian faith relies on our love of Jesus and his love of us. The difference is in the way we express that love. For some, it may be quiet and meditative, with quiet music, silence. I love silence. I love to let my mind wander into the love of God. I like to think about him and what he's done for me. My mother hated silence. She hated it. She, was, she hated loud noises as well, but she was uncomfortable when we had silence. She said, I hate silence because I think the vicar's forgotten what comes next. Maybe he had, but she always felt so desperately uncomfortable about it. We used to smile at her. Some people like loud music. They like loud services. They like a lively way with drums and guitars and songs of joy and the organised chaos of the children's worship when we're not sure quite what comes next, but we delight in it all the same. But for each of us, wherever we are in the spectrum of worship, it means nothing at all unless we see Jesus at the centre of it. A rather clever man I heard some years ago on the radio, he said, we would have full churches if only we kept to the Book of Common Prayer and had the authorised version of the Bible. Well, I disagree. We will have full churches when we delight in understanding our Bible and seeing how God is working in this world as he is and to see how it really matters to each of us today. Old words have lost their meaning, have passed into history. New words sum up the world today. Some may find the old ways best, and, will certainly in, and some will certainly enjoy the new ways. There's no right way to worship Jesus. There is just worship. It should come from the heart. And we worship as the Spirit calls us. Our whole life should be worship, wherever we are. We should see ourselves as involved in faith and worship. We should see the world around us and its people as gifts of God, treasures to be enjoyed, friends to rejoice in. Even Paul, in his letter to the church at Corinth, had his problems with unity. What a disunified bunch they were out there in Corinth. I always smile when somebody says, can you read that passage from 1 Corinthians 13 for the wedding? I do, so, do love it so much. It's all about love, I'm told. All about love. 
Well, it wasn't written to inspire bride and bridegroom. It was actually written to tell the Corinthians off, almost to bang their heads together because they did not show love or consideration to their fellows, even their fellow Christians. Paul is writing, this is how love should be, not the way you do it. Love is patient, love is kind. And your love does not show love. Paul in our passage from Corinthians says this, it's been reported to me by Chloe's people that there are quarrels among you, my brothers and sisters. What I mean is this, each of you say, I belong to Paul, or I belong to Apollos, or I belong to Cephas, or I belong to Christ. Has Christ been divided? This is Paul, St. Paul, early apostle to the Gentiles. This is him talking at the very beginning of the Christian church. They're divided already. It shouldn't be like that. It was never to be like that. Paul says we should be united in our love of Christ, for Christ is not divided. So today, when we try to be united in our faith, allow each other our differences of worship. And we may worship in the gentle, beautiful words of 1662, and I love that. And others may worship in a very different way. But as long as each of us remain united in Christ, it doesn't matter. One is not better than the other. One is just a conduit to worship, to the worship that comes to our heart and our soul and our spirit and our love. We all need to remember that Christ is all in all. Paul said he was sent to proclaim the gospel, not with eloquent wisdom, so that the cross of Christ might not be emptied of his power. Our faith, our trust, our love should be in Christ and with Christ and through Christ. We should all be united in the truth that Jesus Christ is our Saviour. He came to this world to save us to forgive us our sins and to give us the promise of an eternity with him. And that's worth being united for, isn't it? God bless you. Amen. A short time of prayer. We begin with a collect for today. God of all mercy, your son proclaimed good news to the poor, release to the captives, and freedom to the oppressed. Anoint us with your Holy Spirit, and set all your people free, to praise you in Christ our Lord. Amen. Be silent, still, aware, for there in your own heart the Spirit is at prayer, Listen and learn, open and find heart wisdom, Christ. Teach us, O Lord, in the midst of noise, the bustle of business, that you are there, near, close by, even within the creative noise we sometimes cannot bear. Teach us that we can find quietness and peace within, to regain our strength and offer it to you for thy glory's sake. Amen. Father, we bring before you the troubled areas of our world, especially those that are on our hearts at this time. We remember the people of Ukraine, Iran and Afghanistan, 
The place is suffering from famine. Places where men and women of the Christian faith daily face persecution and the threat of terrible acts of violence against them. We pray for men, women and children who have lost so much. They've lost family, homes, livelihood, and in need the little they have through the cruel and selfish acts of others. Help us all, O oh Lord, to value our shared humanity. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord Jesus, we remember that the Christian church so often finds it difficult to remember our own unity. Help us to remember that our various ways of worship should add colour to our faith. Loving you and knowing you should help us to rejoice in our diversity. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Within our own community and our own families, we pray for those who are sick. Lord God, be with us those who are sick in their difficult days. Be with them when they're afraid. Bring healing if that may be, but Lord, show them your love. Hold them in your peace. Be with all those who care for those they love. Give them hope. Give them patience and give them the rest they need. Lord, you are the Lord of all healing. Be here with us today. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, loss can be so very painful, be it the pain of recent days or the pain which has been with us for many years and anniversaries they come they go and the pain just seems to strike deeper in your mercy we ask you to continue to be with all those who mourn be with those for whom this time of year brings memories that cause sorrow and pain help them to know that their loved ones are safe with you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord God, whose we are and whom we serve, we place our lives afresh into your hands. Take us as we are and make us what you would have us be. And so fill us with your Holy Spirit that we may be strong for your service and used wholly for your glory. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And we join together in the Lord's Prayer, a time of united worship. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. May Christ, who sends us to the nations, give us the power of his Spirit. Amen.
been lovely to be with you this morning. I've enjoyed taking your service. I do pray for you and hope you are well and hope that you can come back to see us next week. So Christ, the Son of God, perfect in you the image of his glory and gladden your hearts with the good news of his kingdom and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be upon you. Be with those you love, be with those for whom you pray, and remain with you always. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. 
Thanks be to God. God be with you.